Team Trees versus Christmas. So the other day I was passing the uh, graveyard of trees that accumulate every year after Christmas. And it got me thinking, what's that remind me of? And it was Team Trees wanted to plant 20 million trees by Christmas. So, you know, how, how does that actually compare with the number of trees cut down for Christmas? And just in America alone, it turns out, well, Team Trees managed their 20 million trees, 30 million were cut down for Christmas. But this does sort of highlight the problem with trying to sequester carbon dioxide as trees. You know, these 30 million trees cut down for Christmas, of course, were actually planted, I don't know, two, three years ago or something. So they accumulate a bit of carbon whilst they're growing. You know, they take the carbon dioxide out of the, out of the atmosphere and they, they store it as uh, sugars and uh, carbohydrates, cellulose. Um, and then, of course, they're cut down and they're burnt. And the cycle repeats. But over the entire course of that cycle, no extra carbon is actually taken out of the atmosphere because it sort of sucks up the carbon dioxide, then they're burnt or decompose and release it again. Right? It's a cycle thing. And this is the real problem with trying to store carbon dioxide in trees is unless you're going to forest areas permanently, you're not actually going to take any extra carbon out of the atmosphere. Now, of course, many people misinterpret what I say about Team Trees, that this isn't some virtuous task. No, it's not that. It's that there are people, and I would guess that sort of 90-something percent of the people who do the Team Trees thing think they're actually making a difference, when in reality, no, they're not. They're making themselves feel better by contributing to something like this, but when you actually take a look at practically what they're doing, uh, it's operationally insignificant. I mean, like I was saying, just to offset the carbon dioxide footprint of America alone, the, well, you would have to plant 20 million trees twice per day. And those would have to grow up to full height within a year. Now, that's not to say that I can't be quite a tree hugger myself, in that probably my favorite place on Earth is the coastal redwoods of Northern California. And they've got a pretty sad history to them in that these trees are ancient. They're the best part of, the old ones, the best part of 2,000 years old, which means, uh, you know, they, they, they were old when there were uh, kings in Egypt, that sort of thing. Anyway, the sad thing is when they were first discovered, you know, when the pioneers came across America, their first thought was, wow, what a great natural resource. Just think of how much wood there is in these things. And so they started cutting them all down. And obviously they started cutting down the biggest trees first. And uh, they pretty much decimated huge areas. And the ones that survived were the ones which were harder to access. So this isn't even one of the biggest of the trees. <laughs> Speak, but there's one that you can get up on just so you can feel how tall these trees are. Um, and eventually, the, they did actually get some of these things protected uh, by parks of one sort or another. It turns out, I think the, um, the National Park Service was just too slow. Basically, by the time the National Park Service would have got their arse in gear, all the trees would have been gone. So the state, this is why the Northern Coastal Redwoods is one of the few things where they're not a national park, but a state park. And I don't know, maybe they turn it into a national park later. I don't know. Anyway, uh, the bottom line is, this is just one of the most impressive places to go in the world. In the, first of all, it's a, a rainforest-type environment, and it's dead quiet. There's no bird song. They're huge, isn't it? Full stops. Oh, it's actually still freezing. Freezing stops. Uh, I mean, I'll quite often when I go there, I like go in there 
wearing really soft clothing and barefoot too because when you stop walking you know when you're walking you only hear your footfall and then when you stop walking you hear your breathing and when you stop breathing you can hear your heartbeat it's that quiet it's like the bark of the trees acts as this this sound absorber so uh, it, it's just the most fantastic place to go, and you're surrounded by these these giant trees. The the well, they're the tallest trees on earth. Uh, very impressive place to go. Okay, that for reference is the lens cap for this lens, just to give you some perspective of how mind-numbingly big these trees really are. are absolutely phenomenal. I just, it's hard to put them into perspective, you know. They're just the pillars of eternity. So if you enjoyed that, yeah, yeah, give this video a thumbs up and uh, I'll see you in the next one.